Good morning everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa. if you're new here we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. Uh, current video series is my usual monthly one. We do groceries every six weeks and then for the week following the groceries, week 10 days following the groceries, I do sort of daily videos that update how we're using the current month's groceries, making sure that they get used in an appropriate manner and making sure that they don't get wasted, put on the shelves, put in the fridges, freezers, whatever else. So uh, this was what month we were in November. So November's grocery trip uh, and we're around about a week since I did the trip I suppose. Uh, today's video is cabbages so I managed to get some cabbages really cheap through the fruit and veg store. They were a dollar a head. Their sugar loaf they had the outside were pretty ratty looking but I don't care I just peel them off and we have plenty of animals who are happy to eat the outside leaves and then cook them up. So uh, there was also some cabbage in the hamper this month, purple cabbage in the hamper and I also have had a couple of cabbages come out of the garden too so we've had plenty of cabbage to do things with. We made sauerkraut uh, only a couple of weeks ago so we've still got jars of that in the fridge so we weren't going to make that again. So today we did some okonomiyaki for breakfast which is a cabbage Japanese cabbage pancake type thing and I made pickled coleslaw so come along and see what we got done so first things first we did a breakfast so for breakfast we had the okonomiyaki which is a Japanese style savory cabbage pancake uh, they're a versatile sort of a dish that you can make with whatever you have. Obviously, they're made with cabbage, generally speaking, but we normally do some carrot in there as well. Uh, you can use onions, spring onions. You could probably use capsicum, chilies, anything you really want with them. It's a mixed vegetable pancake that's based off an okonomiyaki, which is a Japanese-based one. So we used the carrot and cabbage because that's what we generally use. I used the purple cabbage for this because if I use purple cabbage in my coleslaw mixes when I can them everything turns purple and it doesn't look quite as nice on the shelf. So I used the purple cabbage for breakfast because that way I'd have all the green cabbages to use for the uh, canned um, coleslaw but it doesn't really matter which way what color you use or anything else it's just that I didn't want purple coleslaw on my shelf again this particular time. The recipe is really, as it says, really versatile. You can add anything you want. But there is a basic uh, ratio that I found online that I tend to somewhat use. And they do two good handfuls of cabbage or an eighth of a cabbage, but sort of an eighth of cabbage. It really depends on what size the cabbage is. Uh, with some onion, one egg half a teaspoon of soy sauce, half a cup of flour, half a cup of water. That's sort of the ratios that they use there. Now, I have gotten to the point where I kind of do it by eye. So I shred up the amount of cabbage that I want to use. So whatever the cabbage is that's in the fridge that needs using and carrots and onion and whatever else I use. And then I add a good slug of soy sauce. Uh, I add eggs by eye. I think I did four, maybe six eggs with this lot. And then I add flour and water gradually. So what you're looking for is you want it to be all the vegetables to be covered in batter and you want so that it sticks nicely in the pan everything's going to stick together it's going to fry off when you flip it it's not going to fall apart all that sort of thing but you don't want too much batter you want the the star of the dish to be the vegetables so you want enough batter to hold it together but not so much that it's more batter than anything else it's not a fritter uh, and it's not really a pancake. It's it's uh, cabbage held together by a bit of batter. So you want to get the, the ratios to work for you. But again, you're making it for yourself. You might like a bit more batter. But we like it to be mostly cabbage with just enough batter to hold it together into a pancake. Uh, so I just add flour and water accordingly. Start off with some, mix it together. I always find it easy to mix it with my hands because you're going to crunch the cabbage a little bit which is going to release some liquid as well and then get it all nice and coated and then I get it to the point that I want to fry it off. We had some of the marinated chicken thighs so I've been doing that over most of the last videos we've been getting through the chicken so some of the chicken was marinated and stuck in the fridge it hadn't been cooked up yet so I grabbed some more of that out and fried that up to have with our okonomiyaki for breakfast uh, to fry off while I'm doing the pancake the cabbage pancakes 
So I do them in the cast iron as well. I use a little bit of lard in the bottom of the pan because that crisps up the outside of them really nicely and I like them to be that little bit crunchy. You don't want the pan too hot because the outside will cook before the batter on the inside does and I like mine to be well cooked through. So just on a medium heat, spread it out when you put it in there so that it's nice and thin and then you just cook it and you flip it as you need to. I like the outsides crispy some people probably don't but I do so I try and get a nice crisp on the outside and then I flip it and I cook it until it's done so it's going to be a bit of personal preference of what done is for that as well we serve it with the topping of choice today was the chicken that we had left we've had it with pork we've had it with pork belly pieces we've had it with whatever have it's just a leftover meat so this is just a dish to use uh, leftover meat with as well so stretch that meat a little bit further to another meal we use abc or sweet soy sauce on the top and it's normally done with a QP mayo but we have run out of QP mayo i didn't buy it this month because i'm trying to restrict some of the things that i buy uh, normally I would have just made up mayo and had that with it but I'm having a real lot of problems with mayo at the moment I cannot seem to get it to emulsify properly I'm not sure whether it's the weather the eggs that we're currently getting I don't know but anyway so I ended up giving up on mayo today and we just had it with the ABC sauce once breakfast was done we then had to move on to the rest of the day's job so that was doing the pickled coleslaw so I cut the rest of the cabbages up. I had eight heads here, uh, peeled the outside. As I said, some of the outsides were a bit sad. I peeled them off and just cut up the inside, took the core out as well, uh, and then shredded them up. I am really, really enjoying having these Victorinox knives that I got gifted. They are the first thing I'm reaching for at the moment. It has just got such a nice edge to it, a nice thin blade. They're really lightweight and I'm very much enjoying using them. So I use that again. We use the, we use carrot in our coleslaw. Uh, there is a, a myriad of recipes around. Some have onion in them. Some have only cabbage. It's, it's sort of personal preference. If you do a bit of a Google, you can find a whole bunch. I'll put a link to a basic one in the show notes as well we use cabbage i like the look of it in the jars but it also adds a bit of sweetness and a different texture as well which is really nice so i julienne the carrots by hand i'd really like to figure out a tool that works well for julienning it but uh, by hand ends up being what i do i don't like it grated because it's too soft it just it doesn't work texture wise for me I peel the carrots because, which I wouldn't normally do for anything else, but I peel them because if you leave the skin on them and they sit for any length of time, the skin oxidizes and goes black and that's going to look bad in your coleslaw as well. So I peel them as well and then put them aside. Now, most recipes want you to salt your cabbage and leave for a few hours to get some juice off, to get some water out, rinse it and then use it. I'm not super keen on that step for this particular dish. So what I tend to do is I tend to sprinkle just a little bit of salt over the whole bowls and rummage it through a little bit, but I don't rinse it. Uh, and I use it with the salt as is. That's my personal preference, but uh, a lot of the recipes ask you to salt it and drain it and rinse it before doing the canning. Um, and if you don't rinse it, then be aware of the salt that you're leaving behind as well. So you, be aware of that when you're making the dish and, and all that sort of thing. I mixed up the brine. So the recipes uh, of brine always make too much. In my experience making this dish, I've, I always end up with an excess of brine. So I reduced it this time. I couldn't find my notes on how much I reduced it last time. The brine is listed as a per head sort of a quantity. So I did it for six heads instead of eight, but I still ended up with a, a large amount of brine. So I could have reduced that even more. Uh, but anyway that's that's life a waste of ingredients though drives me nuts you can can the brine up separately though and use it for something else later on but i already had a full can load uh it was like 6 30 at night there was no room in the fridge to put it in there so i used some of it and the rest of it got discarded the eight heads of cabbage filled nine jars for me too just as a side note so the brine has water vinegar and sugar that's that's the basics you can add some other flavors if you want you can add some mustard seeds some celery seeds all that sort of thing i don't because i like to have the ability to use the coleslaw however i want once i get it out of the jar i also reduce the sugar from the recipe uh, because 
it is a very sweet coleslaw very american uh and we just don't need that much i do leave a fair amount of sugar in there though because it does help with the crunch of the cabbage and the way we eat it i tend we really like it on like flatbreads i drain it put it on flatbreads and then use some mayo with it as well uh, so that sweetness is really nice with there with that but i definitely reduce the sugar from what is suggested on the recipe you're going to have to sort of play that by ear though as to how much you reduce it whether you make it with the full amount first and then work on it but half is plenty in my opinion so i used a mix of apple cider vinegar and white vinegar you can use your vinegar of choice it doesn't really matter we like the flavor of the apple cider vinegar but i am low on it and i have plenty of white vinegar as well so i did a mix of the two of them uh, and but you, yeah, you can use whatever vinegar you really want here. A darker vinegar is going to change the color of your jars, though. Just remember that. Uh, again, you can add seasonings if you want. You can add them to the jars or to the brine when it's cooking. Uh, we just stuck simple. I just really like it plain, personally. But that's the kind of way that I tend to make food because I prefer to have it plain on the shelf. And then I can adjust it later, depending on how I'm serving it. You want to bring your brine up to a simmer so that you're dissolving all your sugar and getting all your flavors emulsified in that pot. And once it's at a simmer, then you add all your vegetables to it. So I just poured everything in and got pushed it down so it was all submerged in the brine. And then you want to just bring it back up to a simmer for a few minutes to make sure that everything has some uh, air and water cooked out of it very briefly. But you don't want to cook it for too long because obviously you want your cabbage to be crispy so push it down under the liquid bring the liquid back up to a bubble for a couple minutes and then turn it off i use a little bit of pickle crisp in my coleslaw jars uh, it's completely optional it is a calcium chloride i buy it in bulk from the uh, brewing shop online a kegland i think i probably bought it from so it's like 500 grams for i don't know seven or eight dollars or something it's inexpensive and i just used a quarter of a teaspoon in the bottom of each jar it just helps to keep things crunchy doesn't change flavor at all um it's just yeah it just helps to keep things a little bit crunchier so i put that in the bottom of each jar before i filled it I fill the jars with a slotted spoon. So you want to get as much coleslaw into the jars as possible. You want to tamp it down. You don't want to excessively tamp it because you don't want it, you know, like a brick, but you do want it fairly full. If you don't tamp it down, you add your liquid, you cook it off. Like most things, it's going to float. So you're going to be using more jars with less product. There's going to be more brine that will potentially be thrown away because we tend to drain it to use the cabbage. We don't use the brine in these jars and things like that. So you want them well packed. I use a wooden... Um, rolling pin but i do have a pickle tamp somewhere a wooden one with a slightly flared base on it i just cannot find it i'm not sure where it is but the wooden rolling pin works perfectly fine for that as well so i tamp it all down into the jars nice and solid up to where the shoulder of the jar is again i'm using fowler's 27s i dislike filling these past the shoulder because i find i have issues with siphoning because of the narrowing so i always do it just to the shoulder uh, but I believe that it's a half inch headspace is what these are called for. So I fill it to the shoulder, tamp it down. Once the jars are filled to the shoulder with the, with the solids, you then need to top them up with brine. So when you push the solids down, sometimes the brine comes up above the level of the solids anyway, because you'll have gotten liquid in there when you did it but you need to add more liquid to make sure that everything's covered. So add the brine up to the shoulder, push the cabbage down to make sure it's all submerged. Uh, if it's not submerged it will discolor on the shelf so it's better to be submerged for that purpose and then uh, top it up with the brine until it's at the shoulder and make sure that there's enough there debubble with a chopstick or the back end of a um, spatula or um, a packing stick whatever you happen to have chopsticks work really well though you want to clean your rims well with white vinegar and a clean cloth because there is so much sugar in the brine that it will get it has the potential to be tacky and it will affect your seals. Uh, fowlers have rubber rings that go around the side, so it's really important to clean the sides as well as the top. Uh, if you're using ball mason jars, when you're cleaning the rims, it's a perfect time to check that the rims of your jars have no chips or anything like that. A little less important with the fowlers because the rubber ring is where the seal happens, not on the top of the jar, but still worth uh, checking the rims as you clean them in whichever jars you have. It's a good time to run your fingers along them and double check. 
I put the rubber rings on my jars because they're Fowler's jars and I run white vinegar around the rubber rings as well. I've discussed this before. I put the rubber rings on when the jars are full, which means that my hands have been in amongst different things. So I like to run some white vinegar around the rubber rings as well, just in case I've picked up something on my hands when I'm putting the rings on. We use, I use stainless steel lids. I did use a couple of single use tin lids here as well because I happen to have some, but I use mostly stainless steel reusable lids and then the clips go on them as well for processing. So the clips hold the rings to the rubber, the clips hold the lids to the rubber rings and that's what creates the seal on a Fowler's jar. So clips go on and then the jars go in the canner. Now, before I did that though, I still had a whole bunch of excess brine. Uh, I can fit 12 of these jars in my buffalo canner. So what I decided to do was make some pickles with that excess brine. I am not a big pickle maker and I don't actually particularly like pickles, but Daryl and Apollo do. So I had some cucumbers that had come from the hamper. They are not the specific style that you would normally use for pickling cucumbers. They're the long ones, but they needed using I had excess brine give them go the kids will eat them Daryl will eat them or they won't and that's life but it was worth a try with that uh, so I cut up the cucumber some into discs some into spears stuck it all in the jars and topped it up with brine the same way as the cabbage uh, this is obviously a sweet brine so it'll be interesting to see what the pickles taste like but as I said I had three spare slots in the canner had excess brine had the cucumbers in the fridge so just decided to give it a go the jars need to go into hot water because they are hot there's hot brine in the jars so you need to put the same temperature water for the same temperature jars otherwise you will shock your jars and risk them cracking so we i heated up the water in the canner and then added the jars to it once it was a similar temperature to the jars now you want your water about one and a half inches above the top of the jars so once I put all the jars in there I had too much water in there so I just used a jug to remove some water too much water isn't actually an issue except that it's going to bubble everywhere and make a mess so I took some excess water out just to make it a little bit neater I always put the lid on my canner when I'm water bath canning it's not sealed it's just sitting on top and it just stops some of the evaporation but also helps with the mess so I put the lid on. Once it comes up to a boil, you need to process these for 15 minutes. Uh, so once it was at a boil, I processed them for 15 minutes. Uh, once the jars, once the 15 minutes is up, turn it off, let it come off the boil for five minutes before at, mi at a minimum before you pull the jars out. Your jars need to sit for 24 hours before you test the seal on them and then they can go up on the shelf. Give them a clean over though just in case you've had any siphoning of the brine into the water. They'll be a bit sticky, a bit tacky, so give them a wipe over before you put them on the shelf. Otherwise you might get mold on the outside of the jars or ants or something like that. You are supposed to leave these jars for at least a week to let the vinegar mellow before you eat them. Uh, longer is better. So uh, plan to make these a little bit of head so you've still got some on the shelf before you're using these ones. Uh, but it is personal preference. You can eat them straight away. They're just going to be a little more sharp the earlier you eat them. So we eat this coleslaw in a, in a variety of ways. I have drained it and used it in okonomiyaki. I have drained it and used it in stir fries. Uh, but mostly we eat it on wraps. So I make your sourdough flatbreads. We have some sort of a marinated meat, a bit of mayo, coleslaw, and a bit of salt. And we wrap them up and eat them like that. Uh, it's good in rice paper rolls as well. Uh, it's good anywhere you would eat cabbage. It does have a sweet overtone to it. So you have to be aware of that when you're putting it with whatever you're putting it with, uh, but it is super tasty. It stays nice and crunchy, not quite as crunchy as if you were, you know, eating it raw, like you've just freshly chopped it, but still pretty crunchy considering. So it is something that we like to have on the shelf a lot. It is a fairly big job for not a lot of outcome. Uh, we got nine jars out of eight heads and it took me most of the day to get it done. Once you open a jar, it can stay in your fridge for quite a while. It uh, doesn't really go off as such. 
it is a pickle after all so uh, you just need to watch it for mold and things like that store it in the fridge once it's open so we will open a jar and use it over a week sort of a time span which is why I've done it in the larger jars less lids that way and because once it's open it lasts a while in the fridge it's not worth doing the smaller jars and having to open multiples of them uh, so that size jar works well it's a couple of meals out of it for us some of the kids like it some of them don't uh, it's up to them whether they want to eat it or not whatever tickles them at the time but Daryl and I really enjoy having it on the shelf cabbages are not something we get cheap very often and they are quite bulky uh, it makes it hard sometimes like when I'm doing my shopping like I bought 10 of them because that's all they had at the time but last month I bought a box of might have been six drumhead cabbages really nice big ones they were only $1.50 each realistically I could have bought four boxes and done it all up but I hesitate for space to be able to transport it home and knowing whether I'm going to have the time to get through it all but we would much prefer a lot more cabbage and coleslaw and stuff on the shelf if we could which is why I need to try and get better at growing it but so far I haven't been particularly successful at growing large quantities of it we have a lot of cabbage moth I always cover them but our weather is is difficult for growing them so I'm going to give a go after Christmas try at the next set of them so that they you know sprout in summer and then they're growing more in the cooler weather uh, I will calculate around about when the best time will be for that sort of a fall autumn type crop uh, and we'll give it another go this year and see how we go but it is definitely something that is worthwhile to have on your shelf it really does taste like fresh vegetables uh, in the middle of when you don't have much in the way of fresh vegetables it is uh, nice and crisp and crunchy and fresh tasting and that's what we really enjoy about it it's a salad in a jar uh, and that is very worthwhile to have on the shelf in our opinion so give it a go see how you like it and uh, let me know and I will see you again tomorrow thanks guys